which is actually a really reasonable price. It's a very well-built tool, and it came with several built Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. This is the Meat Chopper 3000 that I made in a previous video. Now if you saw this and thought it was cool but probably a novelty like I made it for the video and then never touched it again, you'd be wrong. This thing is awesome and we use it all the time. Now it's not without its faults. For one, it's massive. I wouldn't mind it being a tad smaller. But the bigger issue might be cost. Unless you already have one of these lying around, you don't, but your dad might. Check his toolbox. Everyone had one of these back in the day. There just isn't a demand for the Yankee screwdriver anymore. I ordered this one on Amazon in June of last year and it cost $16, which is actually a really reasonable price. It's a very well-built tool and it came with several bits. But add on another nine or $10 for the original meat masher that you have to add on to it and you're looking at a $25, $26 kitchen utensil. And to make matters worse, this specific one is no longer available on Amazon. And the only one that is, is twice as expensive at over $30 for the cheapest one. However, there are a bunch of red handled ones popping up on eBay and some for as low as $10, which is a great deal. So the market for these is pretty fickle. You might find one at a really good price and you might not. So what to do? Well, this tool isn't your only option. As it turns out, someone put a similar mechanism into a whisk. Check this thing out. This was only five bucks and it works just like the Yankee screwdriver without all the bulk. Well, not just like the screwdriver. This can lock for instance, which can be pretty handy. It also goes in a consistent direction, whereas this just spins back and forth. So it might not work as well, if it even works at all. I mean, this is just made to slosh around some eggs, not ground meats and sausages. So it might not be strong enough. We'll just have to find out. Oh, and I hear ya. Hey, Nick, that rotating whisk is actually pretty cool all on its own. I don't really want to ruin it. That's what was cool about the Yankee screwdriver. You can just detach the meat masher part, put on a different bit, and you can still use it as a screwdriver. Heck, you could even make a whisk attachment for it. Well, to you, I would say, these things are often sold in multi-packs. This one came with two, and an egg separator, and others come with a spatula. There are a ton of listings for these things currently. So enough talk, let's make this thing. First step, we need to remove the whisk. Now we could just chop it off right here, but that would make it pretty short. And I'm not sure how many variations between models you're going to find. These ones are definitely on the cheaper side. It seems to just be glued in there with some kind of epoxy. So I think I wanna just try and drill into it. And my hope is that it'll just kind of crack and break off. All right, that wasn't the most elegant way to do it, but it was definitely an easy way. Uh, if you have some sort of clamp or vise and a drill, you'll definitely be able to just kind of get that off. And uh, I came off, I came off really cleanly, actually. I mean, it's a mess, but it came off cleanly and we're left with a, a nice shaft to attach our meat masher to. Step two, decapitate the original meat masher. I'm just gonna chop that off the good old hacksaw. There we go. Super easy, simple tools. Again, something that you should be able to do with tools 
you most likely already have. All right, now the shaft already has some cuts and striations on there, which were obviously put there to help keep the original whisk on when they glued it. Um, and I wanna just add a few more so that when we add it to our meat masher portion here, um, the plastic should have a bit more to grip onto and hopefully it'll stay on there. First, I'm just gonna rough it up with some sandpaper. We use sandpaper to make stuff smooth, but then we also use it to rough stuff up. And secondly, I wanna just make a bunch of cuts in it with the hacksaw, again, just to give the plastic something to grab onto. Now, it would be really cool to thread the end of this rod so that you could screw on and off different tips. And that's certainly something I could look into in a future video, but today I'm just going to make this a one and done unit. And again, these are super cheap right now. It's easy enough to just buy a bunch and just make one specific one for each thing you want. So one with a whisk, one with a meat masher, one with whatever else you want. Now, just like the 3000, I think the easiest way to attach this to this is just gonna be to melt it. But before we hit this with the blowtorch, I'm first going to pre-drill this just so that there's less material that it has to melt through. All right, that should be pretty good. We'll get this back in the vise. Now I think heating this up and just melting it on is the simplest and most straightforward way to do it. But again, this is the more dangerous way to do it. And if you aren't comfortable using fire, you can definitely just glue it on. After all, these are just epoxied on and it seems to work just fine. Well, that worked okay. Maybe gluing would have just been the better way to go. It certainly didn't go as smoothly as when I did this one. Well, that worked perfectly. It just slid right down in there. Although I think I bought a higher quality meat masher uh, this one is definitely a cheaper plastic. The fins are also much thinner. So there just wasn't as much material in the center for it to go. Maybe I melted it too high, but it's, uh, it's certainly on there. So it certainly worked, but uh, would have liked it to have gone a bit better. But I guess all that's really left to do is try it out. It's working fine. Um, I just want to throw this in the mix. Uh, I'll tell you what, this one works so much easier. And I can, and honestly, having the direction go in the direction of the fins, that seems to work a bit better too. But I don't know, this isn't bad. I 
feel like I have more control with this one. I mean, this one's just heftier. It's better built. Well, honestly, that was a little disappointing. Um, it worked. It certainly worked. But uh, as soon as I switched over to the OG, just feeling the mechanism and how much better it functioned, it, it's so much nicer. But then oddly again, switching back, it did feel lighter. I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. I definitely, I think the biggest issue is I don't think if, I think it's a bit off center. Again, like it didn't go on as nicely as I would have liked. I think the fins should be going in the direction so that, because right now it's backwards. Because I think when you're pushing down on the downstroke, you want the fins going in the right direction. And then on the upstroke, it's fine if they're not. That's, I mean, again, that's what's nice about this one is that it's constantly going in the same direction because it has that ratcheting system in it. So you can certainly make it with one of these cheaper whisks. But I think buying a higher quality one, you'd be better off. I think buying a higher quality meat masher, you're better off. So you really might be better off just finding a Yankee screwdriver. But uh, both are definitely options. You know, there's one thing we haven't tested. I think it's worth seeing how well this performs under its intended use as a whisk. As whisking goes, that's fantastic. That's super easy. That works extremely well. Now, one thing they've done here is they've let the shaft protrude out past the whisk, which makes turning it incredibly easy. I can even just turn it on the paper, whereas not so much. So perhaps, like I'd even mentioned in this one originally, where I thought I might have needed to have some sort of protrusion there, that might aid this mechanism better. But on that same point, I don't know if that would work as well when you're trying to mash up meat. But uh, it's certainly worth a try just having the shaft go all the way through and protrude out the top. But, uh... but I'll tell you what, that's an awesome way to whisk. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be using this thing for whisking. Well, there you have it. There is our Meat Masher Meat Chopper 4000. Um, I don't think I'm done with this quite yet. I think there's more to look into in this particular mechanism. I'm actually really curious to try and break one of these open to see if we first of all can get in there and just kind of see how the mechanism is designed. See if possibly we actually could invert it so that if you do get one that doesn't match, you could potentially pop it open, flip whatever is in there around and have it go the other direction. Again, I'd like to take a bit more care in getting our tip on, using a better quality tip, seeing if getting it centered works a bit better, trying maybe a protrusion to see if that'll help it work better. But uh, yeah, either way, these are fantastic tools to have. You know, it makes cooking a lot, well, a lot more fun but uh, it, it definitely makes a difference in, in getting a nice, fine, granular meat. Uh, so I definitely recommend trying to make one. Whether you go with one of these whisks or a Yankee screwdriver. But my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for disappointed. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Bits.